Hey, welcome to the latest edition of Chalk Talk from the Denver Pioneers. As December has arrived, we are deep into winter sports season. My name is Tyler Mon. Pleased to be joined by the head coach of Pioneer Hoops, Dosha Woods. Dosha, it's good to see you for the latest edition of the, the Dosha and Tyler Show. What's going on? Yes, we are back. We are back in December. Great to see you as well. Always virtually, but it's nice to see you. I'm excited for our Dem our December edition. Well, I've gotten a chance to check out a couple of games in person, but obviously you're busy uh, during during your games, as one would imagine. And uh, this this season now, finally jumping into Summit League play, you get a chance on Wednesday to kick things off. Uh, we are actually on the road right now with the men's team for the start of Summit League play. We're in Omaha, and you'll get Omaha for game number one coming up on Wednesday. Um, with where you are at this point in the season, just kind of getting things started, uh, one thing that I know is a big point of emphasis going into Summit League play is hitting the reset button because when you get to game number one in the league, uh, it always feels good to be able to see zero and zero and know that you're starting the season anew. What's been the biggest point of emphasis for your team coming into this and uh, and kind of seeing where things fall once league play gets rolling? Well, it's going to be nice to have that second line on a stat sheet, right? It's like, you know, obviously a reminder of what, what you've done over the year, but then kind of the, just as you mentioned, to be able to regroup uh, for conference play. And and I feel like I sound like a broken record, probably like most coaches, but defensively, we've got to get a lot better um, defensively to be able to uh, finish plays. And I say that, um, you know, the caveat is a few of our wins, um, we've had to rely on our defense to, to win those games. Um, but then obviously on the flip, a few of those times, we, we lost some defensive assignments, things like that. So um, defensively is an area that I really want to continue to challenge our team. Uh, Coach Coach Dubs and uh, Coach Dan are on the road recruiting. So that means me and Coach Miles, who handles re uh, the, the defense and the team probably hasn't liked that because it's been like, you know, 90 percent of defense in practice. You can shoot on your own time. Um, but that's going to be an emphasis for us is just to figure out how we can defend and rebound consistently um, and not when we have to dig ourselves a hole, get down 10. 15 points to do so that was sort of the the lingering um stat line i guess from last time out you you take a loss on the road at idaho um that's not an easy trip i mean just from a travel standpoint and you know the the type of program that you're you're going to square off with in a big sky school um but one of the things that really stood out is uh, you in the third quarter saw a fantastic surge from your team. You come out of halftime. It's not the way you wanted the first half to go, but in the third quarter, they show up big time and you end up narrowing that gap. What did you like most about the way they responded to kick off the second half against Idaho? You know, I, and again, I, it goes back to defense. You know, the, we knew Idaho was a very good three point shooting team. And um, as they asked uh, their, their commentators who, who called the game on ESPN plus was, you know, what is this game going to come down to? Which one of us is making shots? Which one of us isn't? Because we both like to shoot the three ball. And we gave up nine threes in the first half. And I thought they came out just scorching their, then got their average. And, and that third quarter, the second half, we talked about just being able to defend the three point line. And we gave up one three in the second half. Uh, but it really started with us defensively. We were able to pick up the pressure. And that's one thing I do like about this team is we're not just a sit back and man to man and we can we can press, we can go zone, uh, we can slow you down and go tempo. We have a lot of different ways that we can play, you can switch everything, not switch. Um, and in and, and doing so, sometimes, um, obviously, we, we miss some assignments. We do, Everybody doesn't communicate every single possession. And that's what we talked. We watched that first half and a lot of just miscommunication. But what I did like is just how defensively got us going. And obviously, we dug ourselves a hole um, at 20 points. Uh, other than that, those other three quarters, I felt like we played them even. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Beyonce for them got, got super hot. I think she finished with about 33, um, which was like below her average or below her her season high of 37 a couple of times that she's already done this year. But, um, you know, again, I think it goes back to just defensively us taking some pride for 40 minutes um, and not playing catch up. We show that we can. We, I don't know if we like to be down, but we get a little sense of urgency. But can we start the game with some sense of urgency? Like for one to zero, zero, can that be the urgency to get up and see how that looks? And sometimes that is a challenge for whatever reason, being able to get in that frame of mind right at tip off rather than, all right, well, we're going to start to get this thing going, you know, five minutes into the first quarter or whatever it is. Um, when you talk to your team about that, I mean, how do you, how do you communicate like, Hey, by the way, the, the game starts when the ball first goes up. That's a, that's not uh, a Denver problem. That's there's programs across the country in every single sport, not just basketball, where those first few minutes, sometimes it takes athletes to get a little bit, to get into the flow. You know, I know it's a challenge that it's not um, 
specific to us, as you mentioned, I think we try to switch up some things and warm up how we how we do things, uh, having the team come back in, um, really getting creative, asking them what what drills that they want to do, what's going to get you going. Um, as you guys know, I'm one that likes feedback. I'm constantly asking for theirs. So um, we'll try. I'm also one that likes to hoard my timeouts in the women's game. You can advance, um, you know, under a minute and a fourth quarter. And during the Idaho game, I'm like, I might have to use them all because they came out scorching. We were like, you know, stuck in fog because it's really fog. I can't even say mud. We were stuck in fog there. And I'm like, I'm going to have to use all these timeouts right now. And then, you know, we fought back. So it's a challenge that I'm continuing trying to figure out with our team and really to try to ask them, what do they need from us to kind of help them get going? Because you guys have the uniform, not us. Um, we, we always see that as a staff, all four of my, all four of us coaches played at the college level and we all kind of been in their shoes before. So uh, it's your turn to have the uniform. So give us a little feedback. If you need me to do something different, um, I'm all for it. If that means you're going to be ready to go when the game starts, not when we're down 20. Well, Josh, let's talk about this group that you've got here in 2022-23. And we did obviously preseason get a chance to talk about what you had coming in. But now that you're, you know, fully into this year and you get a chance to see your team in conference play coming up for the first time this week. One thing that you've got this year compared to what you had last year, it seems like you've got a lot of depth um, and some more options that come off the bench. And, uh, you know, I know it's something you tweeted about the other day. You've got a freshman class of six who have come in and really over the first, you know, month and a half, there's so much growth that goes on that first month and a half. And it seems always the case with freshmen of, okay, by January, you're really going to be adjusted. Uh, how do you feel like they have been able to, to grow so far through the first six, seven weeks of their college careers? You know, they, they've grown a lot. And, and I think fortunately they've been in a position to have to grow a lot, um, you know, especially with JoJo and Emma, who are starting for us, who's leading us in scoring right now, who they're playing a lot of minutes and, you know, they're able to kind of learn through some of these mistakes. Well, and if you look closely, I'm sure I probably have like more gray hairs in there because, <laughs> you know, six freshmen, I, I never like feel like, okay, did I say that? I said that right. Like, okay, you tell me what I said. Um, So a lot of growth happens. And, and as I tell them, a lot of times for freshmen, uh, you know, once they get to college, everything's an adjustment. The pace is faster, but we have so many more resources where it feels like you can't do anything right because you got four coaches watching you, and then you got film, you got synergy, you got this whole breakdown of your game that you didn't realize existed. Uh, but I give all of them really uh, a lot of credit. They come in and they try to be consistent. Um, it's not easy. And, and we can try to tell them and prep them as much as we want and can. But until they get here and see for themselves, um, with Shira, uh, our freshman from Israel, kind of been the sixth one in that group who came at the end of the semester. And we just had to talk before this. And she's, she, you know, her eyes are so big because it's like, I, I know you guys said all these things, but I'm here now and it's different. Well, yeah, now your body's got to actually like go through it and do it. But, you know, as I said, when I got the position in July 2020, I wanted to have a chance to uh, build with high school kids. I build with four-year kids. And, you know, this is that first year I feel like I really have a chance to do that with having six of them. Um, and, and then we have 13 healthy bodies, as you mentioned, the depth earlier, where the previous two seasons, I think we finished with nine healthy bodies. Um, so not a lot of depth, not a lot of options as I'm looking at the bench. So um, I know it's been a lot of um, learning lessons early on, but I'm excited about the experience that we were able to get in a lot of different ways. Of course, the Colorado Christian game was fun. Everybody had the opportunity to play and contribute in some way. Um, we obviously would like more of those, but I think being able to um continue to help them make progress throughout the year um, is what I'm most excited about. And like I said, the, the, the fun for me is watching their growth. Um, or as my coach would always say, you know, the best thing about freshmen, they become sophomores. Um, that's what she'd always say. And I'm like that, mm. <laughs> but you know, I think in our case, uh, you know, they're, they're doing a lot for us. And I think to have this opportunity um, to, to kind of build their, their they've all, come in and want to compete, want to um, build this program. They knew what they were getting themselves into. And I think uh, though it's been hard, they've been up for the challenge um, every day. Let's talk about one of the, the veteran members of your squad. You get to build around this young core, but the nice thing about uh, doing that and where we are in, in the landscape of collegiate athletics nowadays is you can add veterans uh, who can be the right fit for your team. And Allie Har comes in and has done some really nice things leading the way for you offensively. I know she had a double-double with assists being one of those categories against Colorado Christian. First time uh, in your tenure as head coach that that's happened with a double-double performance. For what she's done being able to sort of be the the spark plug for the engine what have you liked about how she's been able to run the offense 
You know, with Ali, it's been, as you mentioned, just uh, how how I want to play and how players want to play. Sometimes that can be a, a perfect fit. And I feel like that's what we have in each other. I think uh, she's one that could play 40 minutes, you know, 45 if necessary to be able to push the pace. Uh, not not a person of many words um, at all. So I would like her to talk a little bit more. So Ali, if you're listening to this, could please talk a little more. Um, but I, I think her consistency, she shows up and she competes every single day in practice. And, you know, with such a young group, we can teach a lot. We can work on our offenses we can work on our our defenses and we can do some individual skill work but you can't teach experience and what she's been able to bring to to the team especially in that point guard spot um a calmness to her um a competitiveness to her um and an experience that you know she's able to kind of uh guard uh, usually angie robles our other freshman is gardener in practice and she's able to kind of coach her through gardener of course she can go by her if she wants to or things like that so i think her leadership and and been able to kind of just share her own experience experiences, but I've liked how reliable she's been for us. Um, again, both sides of the ball, but really, especially offensively, been able to kind of be that anchor. And it gives it gives the the freshmen um, in that same position an idea of like what, what to look for, what to expect um, once they get out there. So huge credit to her. And I'm still impressed with how much she can just go never seem I know she gets tired, but it never looks like she's tired. So I'm like, you need a sub, you need a sub. Eh, okay. Yeah, you don't you don't look tired to me. So, um, but you know, I, I say that to say she's really been a great asset to us, but especially with her leadership um, that she's been able to provide um, our freshmen um, in, in that same position. That's the opposite of me because I look tired all the time, regardless of whatever I'm doing and whenever during the day it is. It's great. It's a great feature of reaching this stage in life. Uh, Dosa, let's talk about things not necessarily away from the floor, but at least away from gameplay. Yesterday, I got on campus getting set to leave for a road trip, and there were already dozens of parents and kids lining up uh, for your basketball camp that you hosted on campus this weekend, which is such a cool thing to do. It's an especially cool thing to do around the holidays, I feel like. What was that like for your team, for your student athletes, for your coaching staff to get a chance to provide that free clinic and, uh, and see something like that, what it means to the kids who came? You know, I don't know who was more excited, um, you know, the 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 kids participating or their parents. Um, and then really a, a huge shout out to our players. Um, they ran all of the station drills. Um, they were super involved. And this is after having weights and practice um, and then to have the clinic that day. And I think any time. Um, you know, it was a chance for them to kind of see the patients that we joke about as coaches, uh, say it again or show it again. Um, but, you know, for us to be able to provide that, uh, it was great talking to some of the players or parents. And this is their first time on DU's campus. This is their first time um, in the gym even. And so to have that opportunity where it was just something for everybody left with the poster, most of the kids got the poster signed um, and, and a ticket to our game on um, on Wednesday or, or whenever one that they can make it to. So it was a fun way for us to kind of get back this holiday holiday season is is one of those times where the breaks are longer for the kids and things like that and obviously basketball is what we do but to be able to share that with the community and and ultimately have people have a chance to kind of see what du is about um not just uh, who our players are as basketball players but who they are as people and the q a at the end i was really impressed with some of the questions of you know, a sixth grader what's your major i'm like you're in sixth grade and you're worried about what their major is. And so um, it was really a fun time. And I think it was a great experience, again, not only for the kids, but for our, our players too, to be in a position where at one point they were like that wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, you know, person looking up and thinking, and, and if if we at least give hope to like one person thinking, um, I want to be back or I, I want to be able to do that, um, then it was definitely worth it. So we had a blast to do it. And as I, I tweeted, it was our first annual because um, I hope to make it a consistent thing um, about this time of year to really just uh, a reminder to us that not everybody has the opportunity. Uh, one family, I think, had three or four kids. And I'm thinking if they paid for camp, then that's probably $400, um, you know, for an hour or so of work. So it really is great to be in a position to kind of um, show our team in a different light, but then to help um, be in a position that basketball can bring us all together. Well, and one thing that you've also done uh, annually during the holidays, you've got a chance to partner with the Action Center over the last couple of years. And I know we talked about this last year, and I think uh, even the year before, maybe not in a in an interview setting, uh, but we've talked about it over the last couple of holiday seasons where you get to adopt a family for the holidays. 
uh, and provide gifts and, and all of that. Um, and especially now that we're sort of getting removed from the isolation of the, the first couple of COVID years, how has that evolved over the last couple of years, especially now that I would think you get a chance to know these families a little bit better because if everything isn't confined to just Zoom or just, you know, interacting from a, a distance. Um, tell us about what that's been like this year. Yes, you're right. This is our third year of, of doing this and um, pretty much like new to this. Um, it definitely is one that's like personal to me, as I, I say often and openly that uh, growing up, my family was in that position where we often needed organizations to adopt us and help provide a, a Christmas for us. So to be on the other end of that, to be able to kind of provide that same type of blessing for someone else um, it is so fun. And I think, you know, each year I kind of explain to the team, I tell them like, you know, this is why it's so personal and give what you can. And um, like, like the years have passed, our team has stepped up tremendously. And this year, um, as I told the Action Center, being in that situation as a kid myself, my brother, sister, and I will still talk about the times where we got to meet the people who actually donated and either provided a meal. So it was something that I kind of was asking at the Action Center if the families are comfortable, like we'd love to kind of just come meet, give them the gifts. And we had the opportunity to do that this year with two of the three families we adopted. We adopted three families this year and two of the three, um, we had a pizza party at the Action Center and it was a blast. It was so much fun to see the kids um, faces, they didn't get their gifts then because they're going to get them on Christmas day. But um, just to see like the, how appreciative the, the parents were and the kids were and really just to kind of spend time with our, our players. Um, Shira actually is a really good artist. And so um, not like her English is, is great, but it's, it's good. But the one little boy loved Paw Patrol. Well, he didn't ask for anything on Paw Patrol. So she flips the poster over and she draws his favorite character like right then. And so it was just a really cool moment of us just being able to spend some time with them, um, give them tickets to the game if they have time to come. But I think, you know, growing up in that same situation where my my mom was a single mom and relied on a lot of those organizations, I will never forget um, as long as I'm in a position to do so, um, how impactful that was and how inspired it made me that there was somebody out there that cared enough about us to make sure we could smile on Christmas day. So as long as I'm in this position, it will be a staple. And I would want to also give Eliza and her program, a shout out. I actually sent out the link this year to all the head coaches. And she was one that um, emailed me back and um, actually, I think lacrosse tagged me in the post that they uh, adopted a couple of families and then she adopted some as well. So next year, I think I'm sending it out to everybody at DU so y'all be ready. Um, but it's a program that's super personal and I know how important it is. Um, and and when, if you are in a position of need that there are people, um, if they can help, uh, that do want to help. And sometimes it's just knowing like where the help is needed. That is awesome. And uh, Dosha, we're going to wrap up on a hoops question. You get your uh, first look at conference play coming up on Wednesday. Uh, you get Omaha at home, then you're on the road to Kansas City and Oral Roberts uh, right after Christmas. What do you want to see from your team, especially this first one against Omaha? But even as you get your first conference road trip, the biggest things that you're looking to see from them uh, as we kick off Summit League play. You know, we, as we talked about, there was a lot of lessons that we learned in non-conference, and I want to see those lessons applied. I think um, offensively, we're, we're where I expected us to be, a pretty balanced scoring attack. Uh, we've had a few people lead us scoring defensively. Um, and then I think been able to take care of take care of home, right? The, it's, it's wins are hard to come by, especially road wins. So us being able to open up at home, um, really want to be able to be in a position to take care of that and then just see our growth defensively, um, see our growth defensively um, as a team. And like I said, we're, we're better statistically than last year, um, but so is everybody else because we're still at the bottom defensively in the league. So um, that's going to be something I'm going to be harping on. But really, if, if we can be able to uh, be in a position to take care of uh, this one to kind of get some confidence going into Christmas. And then obviously as we hit the road um, to be able to compete with those teams, um, I'm excited just about the growth that we can have defensively. Pioneers head coach to Ocean Woods, Denver and Omaha coming up Wednesday, December 21st, one o'clock mountain time tip off. You can get your tickets at DenverPioneers.com. Uh, Doja, happy holidays. We'll see you when we get back to town and uh, enjoy the start of Summit League play. We'll, we'll be watching. Thank you, Tyler. Go Pios.